Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the fetch API and a sync await to call APIs in JavaScript, all right? So the reason for today's video is because I want to show you how I typically call my APIs from the front end and of course doing it in a modern way using a sync await, all right? So this right here is going to be the test API for today's video. I developed it for myself or I developed it for this video and it's going to be a simple API containing a list of users and the country that they belong to. So as an example right here, localhost at port 3000 forward slash users, then forward slash the username forward slash country is going to give you the username decodes uh, country information. So myself, right? So if I send this across here, we can see we get a 200 OK and it says my country is Australia. My internet code or shortened uh, code is going to be AU and the capital is going to be Canberra. So a very simple API here, which is also going to return a 404 if the username cannot be found. As an example, if I say something like apple.juice here, send it across, we get 404 not found for that user. So we're going to be demonstrating the checking of status codes and of course handling that kind of thing. But uh, this middle part here is going to be the only interactive or dynamic part of this API. So putting it back to decode and of course we get that response back once again. So going inside the URL, sorry, going inside the browser right here is this user interface. So a very simple UI built using HTML with an input field and a retrieve button. So as an example, if you pass through decode here, press retrieve, we of course want to show the user um, that this person decode is from Australia. Okay, so I'm not going to be showing you the code for the API in today's video because in many situations for yourself, you either don't care about the code for the API or you actually don't have access to it. So I'm treating this test API like a real API. Okay, so going inside the text editor right here, we have this field set, the input field with an ID of username get and the button to of course submit or you know retrieve that user's country all right now i am using an on click attribute here now you probably shouldn't do this but as an example for today's video i'm using on click all right and it's going to be calling a function here called get user country so this function is yet to be defined we're going to be doing that to of course demonstrate the api usage all right so Going down inside the script tag right here, we can begin by simply defining this asynchronous function called get user country. So we'll say here, async get, oops, my mistake, async get user country, just like this, okay, with async function at the beginning of it, my mistake. So async, async function get user country, all right, we're good. Now, this function is going to first retrieve the username from the user's input. So we'll say here, const username is equal to then document.getElementById passing through here, username get, then dot value. Now also real quick, the usage of a sync here is gonna make sure that we can now use await when calling the API. So more on that later, but this basically allows us to write asynchronous code in a nicely formatted way. Um, and it looks very similar to normal synchronous JavaScript. All right, so we have the username. We can say, look, if there was no username provided or basically if it's an empty string, we can simply return and cancel everything. And we'll just say here, alert, please enter a username just like that. I'll save this, go back in the browser here. I'm gonna say retrieve and we get, please enter a username, okay? If I was to say something like decode, send it again, we of course do not get that error. So of course we have the error handling for the user's input, okay? Next step here is gonna to be to simply build up the endpoint. So we can see here that this API is hosted on localhost at port 3000 forward slash users and then of course you have essentially your route or whatever it might be, okay? So we're gonna simply copy this URL right here 
I'm gonna say const endpoint is gonna be a new instance of URL. So a new URL object here in JavaScript. So this part here is gonna have a very similar purpose to being a simple, uh, you know, plain string, but the fact that it's gonna be a URL object is gonna allow us to easily add query parameters to the URL. More on that later, but for now, we can use the back ticks near the one on your keyboard here which means now we can paste this in and we're gonna replace decode with the actual username provided. We'll use the dollar sign then curly brackets to simply say here, username, okay? Now, of course, the back tick here is gonna be JavaScript template strings, allowing us to, of course, have this dollar sign and pass in that username. I can now simply console.log the endpoint URL object. I'll save this to go back in the browser I'll say decode, then retrieve, and we get this URL object right here. So we can see it's gonna parse the URL string, which we provide, and of course, break it up, and we've got access to this property right down here called search param. So this right here is my main reason for using this URL object, okay? So let's say your API requires you to, uh, to provide authorization details, in the, uh, in the uh, fashion of a token. So you might be provided with a token in your API dashboard on whatever app you're using. And they might say to provide that token as a query string in the URL, okay? You can easily do this by simply saying endpoint.searchparams.set. And we can say here, set my token to be, then your token goes here, all right? now. You have to check your API documentation for whatever service or app you're using to find out what this uh, URL parameter should be called. And of course, get your actual token tied to your account. So this right here is one of the uh, methods which uh, API service might require you to provide authorization information. Okay, if I was to say console.log the endpoint, but this time I'm gonna say endpoint.toString, it's gonna take the URL, add in the uh, query parameters, and provide you with the full built up string. I'll save this, go back in the browser, provide decode, press retrieve, and we get here this completed URL. We have the token appended to the URL right here, so we're good to go. Now, if you were to provide any characters to this, uh, uh, to this search params here, so back right inside here, they are gonna be automatically URL encoded. So you don't need to worry about doing anything like, you know, you know uh, encode URI component or anything like that's all handled for you. So a very nice way for you to build up a URL. And what's nice is the fetch API is gonna support this object right here. So as an example, I'll say now const response is gonna be equal to, then we're gonna start using the await keyword. We'll say here, await, then pass in the endpoint just like that. My mistake guys, sorry. Await, then space fetch. Okay, very important. I'm gonna fetch the endpoint right here. So now, because the uh, API call is an asynchronous operation, it's going to wait for the response to come back from the server side before hopping down to this code down here. This right here is the beauty of using async await. Previously, when using promises, you have to say dot then, dot then, and so on. This right here is a lot easier to read and of course understand. We can now say console.log the response. I wanna show you this and then show you a way to provide authorization details using headers. I'll save this, go back in the browser. I'll say decode, press retrieve, then we get this response back from the server side, all right? So we have some very important things here. We have the body, which of course is your JSON data in this case right here, and you have the status code. So you can use both of these things here to of course update your UI or show messages back to the user, whatever it might be, all right? Now, before jumping into this right here, I wanna quickly show you how to provide auth details using headers, all right? So we can see here in the, in the network tab of the developer tools, the response has gone through. I might just clear it and try it again. 
Okay, so we can see here we have the response, sorry, the request going through to the server side, okay? And we have things like the headers, okay? So I'll expand this real quick. We have things like the headers, which are gonna be passing through. So this right here is gonna be your request headers right down here. All of this stuff is default by the browser, but you can provide an authorization header if your uh, API service requires you to do so. So it's gonna be up to your service once again, whether it's through the URL query parameter or a header like this. So uh, I wanna go back in here now and I wanna say, look, await to fetch, then provide a second uh, argument here. I'll say headers is equal to, then say here, authorization, just like that. Then say your token here. So authorization is also a very common way to authenticate or to authorize with an API. So you're gonna have to once again, read your API documentation to figure out what this should be, your token or, or whatever it might be. And of course, provide it using a header if you require um, to of course do that. I'll save this, go back in the browser, sends it across once again, press retrieve, and now we can see we have of course the authorization header with the token right there. Now one quick thing to mention with providing this authorization uh, details, okay? So wh whether it's a URL token or it's your token in the headers here, make sure uh, or you know, sort of, what can I say? like try your best to hide your users API keys in the backend. So if you're using or if you're developing personal applications for yourself where you know you don't really mind if your token might be visible to anyone else or if the details being retrieved are not too uh, sensitive, then you might not care about that data being leaked. But when it comes to a real application, you definitely want to try your best to hide any tokens on your own server side. So you might store some token in the database instead and simply file for request, uh, provide a username, something like that. And then your server side can actually retrieve that token instead of it being visible in the front end. So it's always better to try and hide things when you can. But like I said, if your API is, you know, providing unsensitive data, nothing too serious, then you should be okay to provide it here. But like I said, be very careful with exposing tokens to the public, all right? Anyway, once you have your authorization provided, we can now go ahead and check on the response. So going back inside here, we're gonna say, something like this, right? We're gonna say, look, if response.status is equal to 404. So if the user provided a username, which does not exist, we'll say alert, username not found, something like that. We can now simply return out of that. I'll save this and try it out. So I'll provide the apple.juicy username once again. So an unknown user. Press retrieve and we get here, Username not found in the alert menu. Of course, you'd have to provide your own API to update it and you know make that data display, but we can see there we have that check perfectly in place. You know, if we're all good, the user was found, we got the response, we can now start using the data. So here we're gonna say const data is equal to then await response.json. So Converting the response from uh, what you get here is a readable stream. So by default, like we saw earlier, the response has the body, which of course is a stream. So in order to convert that into actual JSON, it's gonna be an asynchronous operation. So we're gonna use await once again. We're now gonna say once the data is provided to us and we have a JavaScript object for that data, we can simply alert that data to the user. So I'll copy what I had earlier on in my uh, testing example. We can see here, we're now just saying, look, I'm gonna say the country is gonna be data.country. So using the template strings once again, uh, remembering that data here, this data object is simply referring to this object right here in the API response. So data.country, then new line, capital is gonna be data.capital or NA, so if the API returns null or undefined for the capital, I'm gonna say here NA, then of course internet code, 
and data.internet code. So very straightforward here. I can save this and go back in the browser. I can now call this uh, API. Say so retrieve and we get here for decode country, Australia, capital Canberra, internet code AU. So that is how you can call APIs using the fetch API in JavaScript and async await. Hope today's video helped you out. If it did, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.